pistons that have finally arrived. I've already gone ahead and assembled the first three with uh, the rod and rings, wrist pins, and retainers. And go ahead and do the last one now that I kind of have an idea what I'm doing. I haven't really changed much. First time I've ever done this, um, relatively straightforward. Um, slide the lube everything up with assembly lube, put the wrist pin in, retainers, and then uh, put the rings on. Since this is a four cylinder, the um, rods are basically unidirectional because there's only one rod per journal. On a V8, one side is going to be chamfered, and the two chamfered sides, the, pit, the rods go together, and then the flat side goes to the outside of the of the journal. But since there's only one rod per piston here, they can go either way. Um, the pistons do have dummy proof arrows on them so that goes to the front so I gotta remember that when I put it on but otherwise uh, these can go in either direction The retainer clips are pretty easy. I've been able to do most of them by hand. Stick them in here, compress them. Just gotta make sure that they're in the groove once they're actually in. I've had to adjust one with the screwdriver to bring it actually back up into the groove. Once it's in, it's pretty obvious. And now we go to the vise to do the, the rings. Putting it in the vise makes it a little bit easier, frees up a hand to get these rings on. The first two I've had a little bit of difficulty doing the, the oil ring. It takes a couple tries to try and get this thing sandwiched in between the two small ones. And it just wasn't, it seemed like it wasn't enough room, it would spin around. And then this would actually expand out and then the two rings would come together and this would be left out of the mix. So actually the third one, I put this one on first, which is, if you know what you're doing, you probably say, duh, but uh, I've never done this before. So put this one on first and then put the bottom one underneath it. And then this is already seated in the groove a little bit better. And then the top one is easier to put on. They kind of work as a package once they get all in there together and they're sand this is sandwiched between the top and the bottom ring it works pretty well but getting them so they're all three in there in the groove was a little bit tricky I did practice with the old rings to kind of give a feel for what causes these to break and what doesn't. As you can see I'm not using a special tool which I did buy but I found this to be a little bit easier.
These are somewhat idiot proof. That one does not fit in the middle where I was trying to put it. Should be the thicker one. Just gotta go slow and kinda feel it. And I am clocking these at 120 degrees per the manual. And they're in. Just like that. I've got three out of four in so far, mostly so good. Uh, one tip, don't forget to lube up your journals as you put it in. So the number one, or the number four piston, the first one I did, I put it on there, put the uh, rod cap on there, and I didn't realize it until I got to the second one that I forgot to lube it. So then getting the cap off the rod was difficult, and then I put some lube down there trying to lube it up in place and then realize that the bearing had stuck to the uh, rod journal so now I'm putting lube underneath or on the back side of where the bearing mounts on the rod so that's bad so I had to take I didn't take the piston all the way out because I was concerned about having to do it again uh, but I was able to clean it all up uh, use some brake free sprayed it in there wiped it down put the bearing back in got the lube on it and got it reconnected and then went from there so that was kind of a small problem that almost turned into a big problem um, so otherwise everything's going so well I got one more to do and I thought I'd film that one I uh, had three practice tries so hopefully this one goes the smoothest I'm using the uh, tapered ring compressor um, seems to be the Slightly preferred method of how to do it. The first and third one went in pretty easily without any resistance. The second one, it, it kind of hung up on me that one of the uh, rings so I stopped and then I didn't want to beat it in uh, pull it back out reset it and then try it again so I start with the piston about halfway down far enough to kind of get it seated in the cylinder but still up far enough where I can get a little bit of momentum uh, with it going in into the cylinder It feels a little stiff and then I just tap it and if it keeps moving then it's good to go just like that I practiced with the uh, old cylinders and you can definitely uh, hit them pretty hard but uh, if you have to hit them that hard you may have a ring hanging up which I didn't want to have to deal with all right so now I got to flip it over and put the uh, uh, rod cap on I'm trying to do this way you can still see got to push up on the piston and then guide the rod around the journal so it doesn't ding it Now the cap. And then the other thing you don't want to forget, make sure you get the right, this came with the rods, um, rod cap, bolts, head bolts, whatever you want to call these things, they came with specific uh, lubrication to put on here so that they torque down right. I'm just working it around the threads and then onto the 
top where it seats whatever the technical name for that is All right, that's getting tricky without a crank bolt. I'm look around for that and see if I can install it. Now I'm just going to flip this over and torque down those caps before I forget. So it depends on what what uh, size you have. I've got the 7 16th I measured under the head at 1.6 inches. We're going to go with the uh, 30 foot pounds and 60 degrees instead of using the stretch method. Uh, so I'll clank them all to 30 foot pounds, then I'll mark them, and then I'll use my torque angle gauge to check the angles. So this thing, you set it zero. Actually, after you take the slack out, probably won't be able to see it now, but get the slack out of the wrench. Set this thing to zero. Recheck your notes, make sure you know how far you're going. All right, 60 degrees. Now I'm turning it until I get to 60. So all the lines are, should be parallel. Right now, when you want this thing to, comes in a package, it's flat. But I set it out a couple weeks ago, so now it's mostly back to its original shape. So putting that on should be uh, a little bit easier. I only let me bury, unbury it here. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put the oil pan on. Got it cleaned up, all nice and somewhat shiny. Not really, but a lot cleaner than it was. And on the third time, I rinsed it out just to make sure there was no more pieces of the piston left in there. I got one more piece of metal out. The bolt that started it all. Uh, it was stuck down in there and it still has plating on it so it was definitely a newer bolt I'm not sure how or where I dropped it to get it in there in the first place but that's the culprit I'm using a little pick tool to pull the pan gasket and get the holes to line up so I can get the bolts in the corners were a little tricky it took a few attempts to get them to line up my battery died and I didn't get any video torquing the bolts down. It's finger tight and then six foot pounds. It's not a lot, but this, the gasket is so squishy that you have to go around a number of times. By the time you get back around, it squishes down and then you have to keep going. So it takes a few tries to get it 